Hi, my name's Kate and welcome to another short film prepared by IFM ECS, the knowledge transfer arm of the Institute for Manufacturing here at the University of Cambridge. Today I'd like to talk to you about the New Product Introduction, or MPI, and share some techniques that have been developed by the Design Management Group here at the IFM. As ever, we'll be providing you with the tools and templates that you need to try out these techniques for yourself, and also the opportunity to chat to one of our expert industrial associates if you want to know more. The topics we'll be covering in today's session are what is new product introduction and why can it fail? An introduction to the four P's of process, product, project and portfolio. Using the IFM NPI maturity assessment tool, understanding your results, and finally, a quick look at the on a page approach to new product introduction. So let's start by looking at MPI and why it can fail. New product introduction is the process of selecting an initial idea and developing it into a final market ready product. Many of you will be familiar with this picture of the perfect NPI funnel developed by Wheelwright and Clark, where innovative ideas pass through well ordered stages and gates before being introduced to market. You may also be aware, though, that in many companies, the reality of NPI is often much more complex and messy. NPI processes often begin with too few ideas and insufficient screening. New ideas are introduced partway through the process, and input from critical stakeholders such as marketing and senior management arrives at sporadic and unhelpful times. Late design changes are made as a result of poor upfront project definition and bosses press for early product release. A final go or no-go decision is often implemented just as the project is available to launch, which can result in significant cost and wasted effort. As products drip out of the end of this unstructured process, customers are often left to find the faults. A good way to avoid these issues and get your MPI process in order is to consider the four P's of process, product, project and portfolio. Research by Dr. James Moultrie at the IFM suggests that many new product introduction pro problems arise due to issues in four key areas as follows. Lack of an appropriate new product introduction process, for example too much bureaucracy. Lack of customer or market awareness, perhaps because of too little market research or user involvement. Projects that are regularly late and over budget due to poor project monitoring and control or ineffective design reviews. Or finally, not enough resources or too many things to do because of failed project selection. What we should be aiming for is a strategically prioritised portfolio containing multiple on-spec, on-time and on-budget projects which follow a managed and fit-for-purpose NPI process and deliver projects which the market really wants. A first step towards understanding how we can improve our NPI activity is assessing where we are right now. One way of doing this is through the use of NPI maturity grids. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of the IFM MPI maturity assessment process and you can follow the link below this video to assess the tools that you need to undertake this process for yourselves. Let's begin to assess our MPI process for an imaginary company called Great Ideas Limited. The best way to do this is to gather a group of four or five individuals from across relevant functional teams and allow each of them to score each category separately. We can then combine these once all of the scoring is complete. The templates provided below will help you do this and also will create some tables and graphs to help you interpret the data. We have separated each of the four P's into components which can be used to better form an assessment of our current maturity level. For example, process maturity, we can look at roles and responsibilities, teamwork and project phases and decision points. We score each of these on a level from one to four and use scaling statements to help us better understand what each of the scores mean. For each category, we should assign three scores. First, we assess where we are now. Second, what we think our minimum standard should be. And finally, where we think we need to get to. As an example, let's take a look at the first area in the process section, roles and responsibilities. As an engineer in Great Ideas Limited, we might think that right now our senior management are firmly in charge and score this as a level three. We probably also think this is the minimum standard. It works for us, but falling into a more disorganised state would really damage our process. Finally, we need to think about where we would like to be. In this case, we can see that a more embedded and less directive approach where roles and responsibilities were clearly defined could be a big help. And hence we set out desired score as a four. 
Next, let's move on to teamwork. Unfortunately, in our imaginary company, we're aware that our functional teams do not work well together. They are siloed and significant rivalry exists between them. Taking that into account, our current score for teamwork is a one. We think that the minimum we really need is at least lightweight project management, so we score a two here. Our company is quite traditional and we're realistic about the cultural change that would be needed to score a four. And so for us, a score of three, a structured and formal project management approach is our best desired outcome. Moving on to project phases and decision points, in our company we generally have a loose idea of project phases, but exactly what these phases are often varies across teams. As such, we would score this category a two. We've had some real issues where untimely and fractured decision making has led to increased project costs, and so we think that we're probably currently below the required minimum standard here. With this in mind, we score the minimum standard as a three. We can really see the value in having clearer project phases and deliverables, and so we score our desired level as a four. After scoring each of the individual criteria, we now take a step back and use the scaling statements to think about our MPI process overall. Having considered each statement, it's fair to say that we do have a process, but there are clearly issues with it, and as such, we'll score a two here. We certainly wouldn't want to get any worse, and so we set our minimum to be a two also. Overall, we agree that we need to get our MPI process to a point where it is used and understand by all, and so we score three for our desired level. Having assessed our process maturity, we can now do the same for each of project, product and portfolio maturity using the templates provided. Once each individual in your team has scored each of the four P's, we can combine the scores together and start to review the results. Before we have a look at the average responses and draw some conclusions, it's a good idea to look at the range of responses received from the team members involved. For example, we can see that the current scores for overall process maturity range from three right down to one. You'll need to talk to the team members to understand the differences in their perspectives and see how they can be resolved. Let's take a look at our MPI performance overall. The good news is that we have more or less at the minimum standard in each of the process, project and product maturity. The bad news, however, is that we are below our desired standard in each of these categories and that we are falling significantly below both desired and minimum standards in our approach to portfolio management. Let's take a look at both our process and portfolio management maturity in detail. Turning first to process management, we can see that we have a couple of areas where current scores are below the minimum we need. We seem to have a problem with both teamwork and project phases and decision points. It's likely that there's a lack of common understanding around the nature and purpose of gated review sessions, which is no doubt made worse by the fact that our teams are not working well together. We need to think about how we can support communication and teamwork and take actions that are going to get everyone on the same page. Looking at portfolio management, it's clear that this is the area where we have the biggest problem, falling below the minimum standard in all areas. So what can we do to help improve things? Well, we need a simple, non-bureaucratic, useful and time-efficient way to review our MPI activities and help improve communication. One tested and proven way of doing this is through the on a page approach developed here at the IFM, a practical way of making sure everyone in your team is on the same page. So let's take a look. As you can see, by organising critical information in the same place in an ordered manner, we can easily track project risks, milestones and costings, whilst also reminding teams of the original project objectives and business case. Turning to an example portfolio on a page, here we can see a quick and simple overview of our entire project portfolio. This can help us to head off problems such as projects overlapping and competing for priorities, product launches bunching together and causing operational issues, or an inconsistent flow of projects from ideation to delivery. Examples of process and product on the page are also available in the documents that you can download. If you'd like to know more about the IFM new product introduction approach, want to talk about the gaps and pain points revealed by your own MPI maturity assessment, or would like to discuss creating your own bespoke on a page templates, please do get in touch with us on the email address below the video. That's it for now. I do hope that you found this useful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.